Hey colorists, welcome to another episode of Comic Book Coloring Tips and Tricks. This is going to be episode 7, and um, if you saw episode 6, we are talking about symbolism in color, and I had mentioned that we're going to uh, talk about using that symbolism um, to carry over into your storytelling of your pages. Um, first off, one thing I want to uh, cover is using using color to help move the uh, the storytelling along. Uh, so right here I have uh, this is a four page sequence from a webcomic template uh, written by Quentin Miles, drawn by Andres Quisada and uh, colors by me and uh, letters by Magnus. Um, I'll uh, put the appropriate links in the uh, in the description so you can check it out. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun working on it. Uh, yeah, I think it, it really shows in the uh, in the color work. Um, what I'll, I usually get the the pages in uh, five page batches, which really helps me out a lot because I, I really like to uh, plan out my color schemes. Um, before, when I was doing it full time, I mean, it's just a luxury now. Um, you know, I can take my time, figure out what I'm going to do uh, with the colors and stuff like that. Before, when I was doing it full time, you're you'll get pages whenever. <laughs> it seems like deadlines have just uh, gone completely out the window in the industry. Uh, people would rather have a, a quality uh, product than a timely one, which you know I can I can see the argument for. Um, could go either way, but, uh, okay, so we got this four-page sequence. Um, let's see if I can get that a little bit bigger so you can see them all at once. I might have to push that guy off the edge there. Maybe this will fit? Oops. Wrong shortcut. Uh, let's see, like that. That can overlap a little bit like that. Same there. All right, perfect. All right, so this is page 25. Uh, we see the character here. He's talking with somebody. Um, I use like the greens and the purples uh, in this setup. Um, and then as the conversations get a little bit more serious, you start to see you know a little bit more oranges introduced and a little emphasis more on this panel right here, the close up of the mouth, because um, it is a talking scene and. Uh, you know, kind of dulled it down a little bit here as we're going to transition to the next scene. Um, also, what I did, let me get a nice brush here. Um, yeah, that should be good. Uh, I also did uh, to kind of emphasis, it's, a, it's a small little details, I think, um, this shadow line right here, just to add more interest to this frame. Instead of just putting another color behind him, but then it also kind of points out the earpiece because we see this up here. You might be able to tell that's an ear, but it's not 100% clear. So again, I was just trying to make it make it a little bit more obvious by having this uh, this shadow line right here, and then also kind of pointing to the eyes, you know, which we saw like in this panel as well. Um, but this on page 26 on this one here we're transitioning to a new location which I was setting in instead like the only warm colors are in the skin tones and we're seeing a lot of teals and uh, the purple so it also kind of helped that. that's why I also introduced you know this part up here the shadow to introduce more purple into the page so that it was it wasn't too drastic of a transition going to going to the next page, page 26. And going from here, you know, we tell uh, the story needs to be told and then going to page 27, it's the same scene. So again, we carry over the, uh, the same color palette, the uh, mother color, if you will, um, that ties 26 and 27 with the teal green it, it keeps these separate because in 28, the last scene, again, we're jumping back to the headquarters that was seen in page 25. 
So we got kind of an interlude of 26 and 27. So I want to differentiate it, but I don't want it to be too drastic of a jump. I don't want to all of a sudden jump to this being uh, daytime, you know, with a, a bright red buildings or anything like that. It's too drastic from what we had established before. So just these little hints, you know, just using that purple, and that's going to tie it in to, to this next sequence. And again, going back to the headquarters in 28, the way I'll, I'll transition that is we still have this teal car that we introduced earlier, but I start to introduce a little bit, just a hint of of this uh, orangish orangish yellow light coming in from this angle, and that'll that'll call us back to what we had seen on page twenty five, you know, in panel five and panel six, and then that allows us to easily go back to the headquarters. But just that little note right here will tell us, like, hey, I remember that from, you know, uh, two pages ago. And now we know automatically where we're, where we're at before we even get to this character again. It, it, you're just kind of helping, helping the storytelling, storytelling move along, you know, without an, an obvious caption, you know, right here, back at headquarters from page 25. We're just kind of hinting at it through the uh, through the uh, the colors, so that's one way uh, colors will help us out. Let me just go ahead and close all these. I don't want to save any of that. Um, let's see another sequence. I can show uh, this would be page thirty three and thirty four. I can make these bigger. Cool. This is just a two-page sequence. Again, it was, uh, you know, kind of like an interlude. Um, yeah, that's that's good enough. I can size it right. Okay, there we go. Same size. Uh, where we have uh, this character, he's typing away. You know, he's getting kind of kind of sleepy or whatever. He's like, oh, I'm gonna take a nap on the uh, on the desk and goes into a nightmare sequence. And it's a huge jump uh, in style. Andres uh, did like the washes on the artwork and looked amazing. At first, I was asked to not color those uh, those parts at all. So just leave them, you know, it has like some, some really nice uh, grays, but it was just like the, the white grays and blacks. And for me, it just felt too too drastic of a jump. Uh, I'm a colorist, of course. I had to throw some color on that. But uh, so we, then the hand comes in, uh, and she wakes him up. And then we'll we'll cut to another scene after this. But I just want to show some of the some of the like little techniques again uh, to show to make that transition a lot smoother. Um, because just going from the artwork here to this different style, and then this style to this style, it was too drastic. And I, I wanted to help soften that up a bit. So what I had done is first, you know, add the warm tones for the nightmare sequence. It Having that, I did that with a watercolor style, a watercolor brush that I have to kind of match the washes that Andres was doing already. Uh, so it, it wasn't too drastic uh, if I colored it the same and it's also like a little a little hint that oh, okay this is gonna be uh, we're, we're somewhere else this is a different sequence or whatever um, so then I kind of warm up uh, let me get my brush back out here uh, warm up this these little part little little light source coming from here and uh, just kind of warm it up and it'll make for a smoother transition. We got this skin tone right here, and then with this warmer, or you know, uh, like a light, light orange uh, color coming up this way on the desk. And that'll that'll go right into the warm tones here. And again, I kind of did the same thing, introducing those tones into the background, you know, here. Uh, behind the hand and also lightened up the line art a little bit to kind of show off some of these other some of these other colors like we see we'll, we'll see here 
little reddish, brick red um, color, you know, into the line art. So he's still kind of coming out of it, and then next panel, boom, he's out. He's out of the nightmare sequence. So again, just using uh, color to help move the storytelling along. Um, I think if, if we had just done it, uh, just regular colors, you know, up to up to this point, it would have been kind of a little bit more confusing as to what was going on, you know. And then if we had this part here just cut off, so we have one style and then a totally different style down here. Yeah, uh, it just wouldn't have worked. Uh, so again, helping the story move along using uh, using color. And to bring it back to what we were talking about before, I have another three-page sequence. Uh, going back to the symbolism and color and everything uh, we're talking about in uh, episode six of, of Tips and Tricks. So this is, uh, there's a sequence before this that happens again. This is like another interlude. And I wanted to have uh, in the script, it just calls for a guy waking up. You know, we could have colored it any colors, but I chose a nice, cool uh, blue to uh, symbolize, like, the tranquility, the calmness of the scene. You know, the guy's just woken up in the script. I think he he just had this uh, uh, cybernetic arm implanted, and he's thankful. You know, he has, like, a, a new lease on life. You know, you go and play with his kids and everything like that. Um... So nice, calm colors, you know, a little bit of uh, purple in here for spirituality, enlightenment, but then also to help out, you know, a little bit of, little bit of mystery as well. Uh, let me get that page back up. Uh, so as we go in, you know, I start to warm up the scene a little bit. Something, something's going to happen. So... With the colors, I'm getting you ready for that something to happen. Just slightly warming it up a little bit more. We still have like the cool colors from the previous scene. Transi transitioning, we're warming up that purple as well. And then, bam, something happens right here. We're not quite sure yet, you know, with the, the mystery uh, symbolized by the purple. And we see like the, the, the warm colors on the, on the face and around the hand over here, there's something going on, and it's no good. And then that leads us into the next page, bam, danger, this guy is in trouble. Um, and then, you know, he gets his arm uh, ripped off, blood everywhere, breathing out his mouth and his nose, tears rolling down his eyes, bloodshot eyeballs, and I'm going back to that purple, uh, rim light around him and introducing the cool colors and the shadows again kind of to indicate like okay now we're going back down to coolness just a little hint of coolness um you know a little bit of mystery we're not quite sure who this guy is at this point that ripped this other guy's arm off um because after this page it, again it cuts back to another scene so we're kind of left wondering you know what, what's going to happen next and it's kind of, yeah, it's pretty much all I wanted to cover today in this episode. But, uh, yeah, I think the using the, cool, the colors, you know, the light blue to sit, symbolize the calm, and then warming it up slightly, 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 and then building up to the warm color. Instead of going from the cool colors to bam to the red, it's too huge of a jump. You want to build up to it little by little. And... Um, if you look at uh, one of the fascinating, I think it was in 3D World, they had a, a really great uh, article about uh, uh, using color to help storytelling in uh, animated features. And one of the ones that they focused on was Sleeping Beauty, one of my favorite uh, Disney, Disney movies, not only for the amazing backgrounds by Avon Earl, but also the color schemes. Um, you know, at the beginning, it's all nice and bright, and then Sleeping Beauty, uh, she gets cursed, and then, you know, it's dark and somber, and, and it gets to the point where it's like the, the climax, where it's like the, the witch is introduced, 
and uh, you know, then the dragon and everything. Everything is like greens and purples, totally, totally different from the nice calm that we first started off with. And you could break down each scene by the color schemes that were that were introduced, and with the greens and purples, the two colors that really fight against each other. It, so and it's like this epic battle. So you know, you're just kind of uneasy with those two colors against each other, and it makes for a really interesting uh, sequence of events. And it's like the small little things that you never really think about. Average reader probably won't notice it, but it's there. And it's just like one of those things that, that can help the story along, but people will notice it. And um, yeah, I, I recommend it. even uh, cinematography and movies, uh, one of the ones I love to point out, Joe versus the Volcano. Not a fantastic Tom Hanks movie. Uh, not a fantastic movie at all. But I absolutely love the cinematography in that movie. From when it starts off, uh, Tom Hanks is in a dead-end office job. Everything is lit by fluorescent lights. And once he goes on his, uh, his journey uh, to the islands and everything, everything's like bright, vibrant colors. So you get the feeling like, oh, he was in the office before. He's like dead inside. You get it just from the lighting. And then out to the blue skies and the, and the lush greens of the, uh, of the jungles and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, he's alive. It's, it's just like these, the hidden things that you don't really notice um, can mean so much. So, uh, yeah, try it out in your uh, sequential work. Um, Again, these pages were from Template. You can check it out on qamcomics.com. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, same thing with the link for Andre's uh, DeviantArt and my DeviantArt as well. Lummage.deviantart.com. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them on the videos. I check them often. Um, or you can send me a note on DeviantArt. Um, I think that's about it for this episode. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and welcome to all the new subscribers we've been getting. Uh, feel free to join in on the, the conversations we've been having about color. All right, thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye.